chose this message because there's seven times that God wanted to be with us. There's seven times that God wanted to be with us, and he showed us. One thing is God, Emmanuel. God, God wanted to dwell with his people. One thing about this, God wanted to dwell with his people. And we see, behold, it says a virgin which shall be with child and shall bear a son, and his, his, his name shall be called Emmanuel, translated to God with us. God said he wanted to dwell with his people. God wanted to dwell with his people. That's his whole purpose. God wanted a family. First of all, God wanted a family. So him and God, Jesus, in heaven had a conversation. The conversation went, you know what? I want a family. He said, so you do. Well, where are we going to put him? Well, let's put him on earth. Well, guess what? That's a good idea. But I got to clean up the dinosaurs. I got to clean up all the stuff down here. So God wiped out all the dinosaurs. And he made earth for man. He said he created earth. He wiped out all the dinosaurs with a flood. That was the first one. And then he put, and then once he put, then he had the land, he put man on earth. And when he put man on earth, it says, in, and when he put man on earth, he had an idea. And his idea, let's, let's look at this. This is almost our family. I'm going to start with Adam and Eve. But I want to show you Isaiah 7 14. 7 plus 14 is what? 7 plus 14 is 21. Remember we talked about 7, 14, and 21? The scriptures tell us 7, 14, it says right here, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. He said a virgin will be with child, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. That's 7, 14. God gave his name right here in 7, 14, 21, Emmanuel. Not only God gave his name, look right here. We see Isaiah 7, 14, but we see Matthew 1, 2, 3, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, put it on a one, it's a seven. Five, put it on a two, it's a seven. Four, put it on a three, it's a seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, four, and six, five, and four, put it on all those numbers, can come up to seven. But he says in the same thing, behold, the virgin shall be be with child and bear a son, and his name should be called Emmanuel. Now let's look at the seven times. We talked about Adam and Eve. God created Adam and Eve, why he wanted a family. So he created Adam and Eve. They were perfect. They dwelt in the land. So God said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. God said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. Look at us. We're made in the image of God. And I'm going to show you how. So God formed us out of the dust. And he says, he breathed his breath into our nostrils. He breathed his breath in our nostrils, and we became what? A living what? Soul. It says right there in Genesis 2. We are a living soul. So what is this? Watch this. So we are a living soul. Watch this. So we have a soul, we have a spirit, and we have a body. Amen. We have the triune right there. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the body is the Son. The Spirit is the Holy Ghost. And the soul is God. He said he made us a living soul, like him. Woo! Amen. So he put this trinity. We, we are, I, I, my body, my spirit, and my soul hold this body. This is a temple. So, so the Spirit... And the, and, the, and the soul are housed in this flesh. You take off this flesh and you can see the spirit in the soul because it's, it's, it's allowing me to walk around. But God is three in one. Amen. He's one, but he's three. Amen. He's the soul of it. He's the spirit of it. And he's the body, so he's three in one. Amen. And I can get more into how he put this thing together. Because he put it together like the tabernacle. And we'll show you. So he said, he told them what to do. But one thing I'm going to let you know. This is the first time God dwelt with his people. Dwelt with man and Adam and Eve. He walked. God, it says right here in the Bible, right here it says, And they heard the sound of the Lord walking 
in the garden included, they heard the sound of the Lord walking. Can you walk? They, they, God walked with them and talked to them. Amen. He walked with them and talked to them. Hey, what's up? Adam, what you doing today? Oh, I'm just, I named all the animals just like you told me to. I named all the animals. The snake, I started doing the birds, and I gave them all names. He said, oh, so what has you been doing? Oh, man, this garden is beautiful. They had a conversation. They talked every day. They dwelt, they, they talked every day. He said, Adam, by the way, there's a tree over there I don't want you to touch. So when Adam touched the tree, all communication broke off. That's why today we don't have that, we don't have a direct line to him. We don't have the direct because communication broke off and the direct line to him because of sin ceased. So, but we have a direct line, but the line is kind of distorted a little bit. And when I say, I'll show you what I mean. So the second he dwelt with man, the second time he dwelt with man. Okay, hang on. You're good. You're good talking. The second time he dwelt with man, the second time he dwelt with man is in the temple when he told Moses, you know what? After the flood, God killed everybody. You know, it was Adam and, and Adam and Eve, and then the world was wicked. There's eight people. Eight people. The world was wicked. God destroyed them in the flood. Then God said, you know what? Since Adam and Eve messed up, now I need Moses. I want you to build me a tabernacle so I can come down here and do what with you got. Tabernacle means to, to tabernacle among us. So Moses built the tabernacle. And he says, I want you to tell the 12 tribes to line up around the tabernacle. And I'm going to be in the middle. So when you go into the holies of holies, I can speak to the priests and the prophets. Priest, and tell them what I said. Moses, I'm talking to you, but I want you to be my spokesperson. Because since the line of communication, I'm allowing you to do it. So I can talk to you. I want you to tell my people, and I'm going to come down and dwell with you, Moses, and tell you everything I want you to do. So Moses built this tabernacle. And if you see the tabernacle he built, it took him seven days to build it. Seven days to build this tabernacle. And he built this tabernacle, it took him seven days. They had seven pieces of furniture in the tabernacle. Seven pieces of furniture inside the tabernacle. You know how he used the number seven? Because that's God's number of completion. That's his number. So there were seven pieces of furniture in the tabernacle. What did they have in it? Seven pieces of furniture. You can see it. They have, um, I'm going to start with the altar, a burnt offering, where you put the, 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 the burnt offerings on. That's the bronze lever, where, you, where the priests would wash themselves and clean themselves. They had the lampstand, the seven golden lampstands, the menorah, which we have over here, which shows God's feast days, which shows God's days of the week, which shows God's presence, that they, the lampstands would never go out. And then they had the showbread. Then they had the altar of incense. The altar of incense. This is where God, the, the, the priests would put their prayers, and the prayers would go up to God. And all our prayers go to the altar of incense and go up. And this great aroma he smelled when we pray to God, he's listening. And then they had the Ark of the Covenant, where they would carry around. And they would have to carry this on four corners. And they had to walk. And they, God told them to use this Ark of the Covenant. And then they had the, set, the seven piece was the mercy seat, where God would sit on. You had to dip your hand in the blood and dip it on there seven times. It was called the mercy seat. So this is what Moses did. The third time God dwelt with man, man, he told, he told, after Moses, he told Solomon, I want you to build me a temple. So Solomon came. Solomon came and built him a grand temple. He didn't allow David to build it because David was, had, had, had war in his hand, blood on his hands. He wanted Solomon to build his temple. So Solomon built his temple. And guess what it says? <laughs> on the eleventh year, the month of Bull, which is the eighth month, was the house finished through, throughout all the parts thereof, according to the fashions of it. So, so was he seven years building it. <laughs> seven years it took him to build it. Seven weeks, now we got seven, seven days, now we got seven years. So God is always showing the number seven all throughout the Bible because he's speaking to us when he does that. He's speaking, he said, I approve of that. 
Amen. <laughs> That's what he does when he says this. He approves of it. So he built this temple. Seven years to build it. And it housed the same thing. And it had the cherubims in it. And you had three compartments. Three compartments. And you had the holies of holies. Only the high priest could go in that holies of holies. Only he could go in there. And he'd go in there and he'd dip his finger in blood at seven times on the altar of God. The fourth time, God dwelt with man, because that temple was destroyed. Then Herod came in, and he built the temple, because that temple was destroyed because of their sins. So Herod came and he built the temple. And here's the, 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 the timeline of the temple. At the same time, I'm not going to go through all the timelines. But it's interesting. You see all of how, how God had a temple. God wanted a temple. Oh, he wanted a temple. He is. He is a temple. So God built this temple. The fifth time was God says, I'm going to send my son Jesus. I'm going to send my son Jesus, my Holy Spirit, in, because you guys not listening. Because all when Adam, when Adam sinned, I, I, did my, I, I killed the first blood. And I shed the first blood of man and covered them with the, 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 their nakedness with the, with the sheep. I killed the sheep and I covered their nakedness. But I knew long before it all happened that I was going to cover your sins one day for, for good. So I'm going to send Jesus into the world. And, and Jesus, when we remember him, we remember him walking when he was here. What did he do? He walked to the temple. He would go to the temple every week on Shabbat. Every week where we should be. Every week we should give God glory because I'm going to show you right now that we're getting close to seeing the king come. But they, Jesus came and he answered and then watch this. This is what Jesus said. And then answered the Jews and said to him, what sign you show to us? Show us a sign. The see that you do with these things. You do miracles. And show, give us a sign that you, you, who you are. Give us a sign. And Jesus answered and said to them, I will destroy this temple in three days and I will raise it up again. He was standing in the temple when he said it. So they're like, wait a minute. You said, what if I said, came in today and said, I'm going to destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. He said, how are you going to How are you going to tear this down in three days and build it back? He was talking about himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, How you gonna do it? The Jews said to him, 46 years this temple was built. <laughs> and you you were tear it up in three and raise up in three days. And Jesus was thinking about his body. Because he was gonna die and come back. That's the temple. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is now he's in this temple. See, all the time he had a temple dwelling in. Now he's in this other temple, which we have, the same temple. Yeah. This is our temple. So watch this. So Jesus answered him and said, destroy this temple and raise it up in three days. He says, he says, watch this. He will, Jesus rose on the third day. He died and rose again and destroyed that temple. And watch this. So in John, and so he was showing himself that he is God. Amen. He is God. Jesus Christ is God. Amen. Three in one in the triune God. Yes, he is. So when you see God the Father, and that's why I want, a lot of people don't understand this. And I tried to explain this the other day to a person. And uh, I really want to explain this. A lot of, the only Christian church understands this. What do we understand? How can three be one? How can three people be one person? And we explain it like this. Body, soul, and spirit. I, I, I'm one person, but I got three things going on. But God has three things and one thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> so we 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 it's like flip side. You can see on that the three in the one. <laughs> well, we can see only the one in the three. <laughs> so this is what he said. Now John said this. He said, I mean, in, in the book of John fourteen nine, it says that Jesus said unto them, and he's talking to Philip. He says, Philip, you asked to see. Show me the Father so I can be glorified. I've been with you all this time, and yet you have not known me? Philip said, show me the Father. 
Jesus, show me the Father so we can glorify. Show me, show me God. He said, man, I've been hanging out with you all this time. Philip, <laughs> you see me do things, you see me eat with you. And he says this. He, he seen me, he, see, he said, and who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show me the Father? When you see me, you see the Father. When you see the three in one, you see the one, you see the three in one. I am the three in one. Amen. <laughs> you see the flesh, I'm the flesh part. <laughs> yeah, I'm the flesh part. But I'm part of the other two. We're all together. Just like I'm one, I have three. When you say, Harold, come in. If I say, Nate, come here, Nate, then you ain't seen to come. But if I say, Nate, come here. His body didn't go up here and leave the other part over there. <laughs> His spirit ain't gonna jump up and go over here and the other part sit there. It's a three in one. It's a deal. So everybody is made up like this. When you see a guy on the street and you walk past him, you ain't gonna say, I see your body, where's your spirit at? Where's your soul at? He's that, that he's the spirit and soul and body walking right there in front of you. But when you see Jesus, or when you see the Holy Ghost, or when you see God, they still with their separate. So you can't say that. So people got to understand that. They're the same. And six, the millennial reign. The millennial reign is a, is, a, is, a, is a part. Now Jesus came. He's gone. But Jesus says, I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit inside of you to dwell with you. To comfort you, to teach you right and wrong. To teach you the, to teach you the word of God. So now you have the written laws, the Ten Commandments written in your heart. They're in your heart now. The word on paper, now they're in your heart. So when you break one of my laws, you get convicted. And you know, you know. So watch this. So now, he says, in the millennial reign, right now in Israel, the Jews are looking to build the third temple. They're looking to build this temple, the third temple. Because they don't have a temple. They destroyed. He told them when he left. The Jews would make Jesus very mad one day. And he got so mad, he says, not one stone would be left on another. It would be thrown down one day. In the last days, they asked him, when are you coming back? He says, I'll tell you. He said, not one stone will be left on another. In 70 AD, Titus came in, and they didn't burn it down. They took one stone down at a time. Why? Because when they burned it, the gold melted between the seams. And then they had to come and take one stone to get the gold out. So there's like one stone down at a time to get the gold out, all the way down to the bottom. So he said, well, one stone, we not left on another. So that promise I fulfilled. That's in 70 AD. Now, they didn't have no temple. All the Jews all over the world today don't have a temple. I don't know if you guys ever seen that Dome of the Rock, the Muslim temple right there on the Temple Mount, the Dome of the Rock. That's sitting there right now. It's a Muslim temple sitting on that piece of land. And you, you hear on the news Israel fighting and all that. What are they fighting over? What's the most expensive real estate in the world right now? Somebody thinks Beverly Hills. No, this is Jerusalem. Because the enemies of hell don't want the Jew, God's people with this. Satan don't want you with it. Satan don't want you with it. So Satan even come up with his own place. We call Jerusalem the holy city. Let me see what Satan said. Look at Romans and Italy. That's the holy city. That's not the holy city. <laughs> Jerusalem is the holy city. <laughs> then they say, look at Rome. The city of the city, Rome where, where the Catholic Church is. Oh, look at it. It's, a, it, it, it's one of these cities. Uh, it's a holy city. It's a, 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 a blessed city. It's God's city. No, God's city is Jerusalem. It says it. So watch this. So God says, watch this. In, in Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, and then it was given a measuring rod and a staff. And he told them, rise and measure the temple of God and the altar thereof who worship there. But do not measure the court outside the temple. Leave it out, for it is given over to the nations. And they will trample the holy city for 42 months. So God says, I want you, I want you to measure the, the holy city I'm going to bring. I want you to measure the holy city. So God here wanted to measure this. He gave this one to be trampled by the Gentiles. But he said, measure this side. Because one day, very soon, 
God is going to do this. During the tribulation period, God's going to put a temple there. What did they follow him? Watch this. You know why God's going to put a temple there? Because he's trying to make them three faiths. The Muslims, the Jews, and the Catholic Church, the Christians called the Catholic Church, the Christians. Muslims, Jews, and Christians, they worked, worshiped him. So in Jerusalem, everybody would go to worship him. Guess what? The Muslims, wor the Muslims worship on Friday. The Jews worship on one day, Saturday. And Christians worship on one day, Sunday. So everybody get a chance. So we're going to divide it up. Everybody go worship. We're going to stop the fighting. This is the answer. I'm going to stop the fight. I've got, got a solution for everybody. Jews, you ain't going to fight the Muslims. Christians, you ain't going to fight nobody. Just divide it up. So Muslims, you got the Friday. Ramadan, and you got all that. Jews, you got the Saturday, Sabbath day. And Christians, you got Sunday. Now y'all should invite them all. Come join me. That's what's going to happen in the future. Because God says this. He says he's going, he going to measure the temple. Watch this. They ain't even talking about today. Look at this. A peaceful solution for building the next temple. It's a peaceful solution. What's a peaceful? We don't, we don't, if, the, if, 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 if you know what, what happened, do you know what happened if, if you would send a bomb into this? Ooh. If you blew that temple up, you know what's happening? Let me say this, just so you can understand how big this world is. This world holds seven billion people. Seven billion would have been. Seven billion. Two point something billion are Muslim. Two point something billion are Muslim. Mm -hmm. Two point something billion are Catholics. And two point something billion are nobodies. You got a small remnant of Christians. When I say nobody, they Gentiles, they don't do nothing. They don't care about God. So all these people, but these all these Muslims, if you blow that up, two point something billion Muslims, look at, look at all the Muslim nations out here. Oh shoot. Yeah, you start World War Three. And this time, it's be nuclear. It'll be a nuclear war. Do you think we can survive a nuclear war? Wow. That's why God has his hand on us. Because we can't do it. We will never survive. America will never survive. If Russia right now launched a nuclear war here, we, we, we will retaliate. <coughs> and, uh, and then China would jump in. And then Europe would jump in. It's not going to be destroyed. But God has his hand on us. God won't let that happen because he says nothing will happen to a shadow comes. Amen. Nothing will happen to a shadow comes. Amen. So watch this. So in saying that, they've been, they've been grafting the design already. You see that? Mm -hmm. But the Bible tells us, you know who's going to allow them to build that temple? The Antichrist. So he's close. He's going to allow them to build that temple. We'll be gone before that happens. But I want to show you something. So they have pictures of the temple. They're divided by here. But I want to show you something here. Let me see if I can find it. So we look at these times God dwelt with man. We look at these times God dwelt with man. One, two, three, four, five, six. But well, we got number seven. <coughs> oh, we got number seven. We got six times. But that seven time, that number seven, I like that number seven. We're going to be married to him. We're going to have a wedding. We're going to have a wedding. And guess what? We are called the bride. All of us in here are brides. He's the groom. All of us in here are the bride. And he says, watch this. In Revelation 21. I what is this? 21. Wow. 21. 1. What does it say? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there were no more seed. So God says he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. What do you think he'll put on it? If he creates a new heaven and earth, what do you think he's going to put? He cannot put everybody on there. Because the world will be just like it is now. He got to put the ones that trust him. Amen. And obey him. Amen. And put their trust in him. So this is for Christians. And this is for born again Christians. Because I like that. I don't like to use the word Christian all the time because the old women come to my door and say, we Christians. The Mormons come to my door and say, we Christians. The Moody's come to my door and say, we Christians. No, no, no. When I say, are you born again? They stumble. <laughs> 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 
because they don't know what that means. They stump. I'm, I'm, I throw a stumbling block in their way. All right. <coughs> what does that mean, born again? Born again means <coughs> the grave. And I, I went into the, when I got baptized, I went into the water and I came out. <coughs> I'm not that same arrow anymore. I'm a different person. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. He says, unless a man is born again, he never can enter into the kingdom of God. But let me show you something. So here we are. Here we are, new heaven and new earth. He's going to deal with sin. New heaven and new earth. See the arrow. New heaven and new earth. God's going to create it. And he says, watch this. And I, John, saw a holy city, a new Jerusalem, come down from heaven, prepared for his bride and adorned for her and her husband. A new Jerusalem now. A new temple coming down. So John said he saw a new temple. How do you this temple going to look? Well, well we, I'll give some ideas. I can give some, I can give some ideas, but woo! God will have. He said, He said the streets would be made of gold. Amen. He said you be walking on. You ain't got, and ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna be down to take a chip out of them trying to put it in their pocket. No, <laughs> <laughs> He made it where. Do you see anybody running down trying to take a chip out of this, walking on the street trying to take a chip out of the concrete, taking it in, piling it in their pocket? They walk on it all day. It's concrete. That's how gold will be when you walk on it. You're going to say, oh, it's nothing. Gold, it's nothing to me. Because guess what? God said he's going to give us new bodies. Amen. Because how's, those, how's that spirit in New bodies, how's that spirit? Guess what? I said new bodies are this. How would you like, you know, somebody was telling me the other day, he says, you know what? You know, you know I drive an uh, expensive car, and, you know, I drive a Lambo. I said, one day when I get out of here, I'm going to have it. I don't care. You know why? Because whatever you think, you're going to be here. That's right. That's right. I said, I'll be right there. I'm going, I'm going over here to get me some. I'm going over to Jupiter. I'll be right back in about 10 minutes. I got some. I'm going to get something, bring something back to eat. Boom! Boom! I got it right here, man. <laughs> you know, I got my bags right here. So, this is what God is going to do for us. And that's why I tell people, be patient. Now, now I know I don't like tabloids, but I'm about to close this one. I don't like tabloids because they're kind of strange and they say crazy things. But this tabloid caught my attention. I wanted to just bring it up. And it says, heaven photographed by the Hubble Space Telescope. And it was a tabloid. And I, I don't know whether it's true or not, but it kind of makes me wonder. You know how you wonder about things, God? How, how is heaven going to be? What is it going to be? So when they took this picture and they said this, they took an image, an image of this galaxy in space floating in. Way out of space floating in. They took this image and said, the, what happened was, let me give you a story. They were fixing the telescope, seven astronauts went up. Seven. And they were fixing this astronaut, that's what we them. Seven astronauts went up, they were fixing the telescope, the Hubble telescope, so they can see into space. And as soon as they fixed it, as soon as they came back, they started downloading images. And then they said, wait a minute, what's that image? It looks like a city. Floating in space, <laughs> sitting there. And he says, that must be happy because that thing is shining way in deep space. So they had this whole thing. Yeah. And so, so, <laughs> so when, they, when they took it, it was just sitting there in space. Because one thing I know about God, when he speaks something, it's already made. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever he speaks, if he said you have to work, it's already there. <laughs> he just ain't here yet. It's there. Whatever he speaks, mm, the earth, the world, the, the, everything just comes. It's like God is the only one who can create something from nothing. Right. We have to have something to create. We have to, I need a piece of wood to make something. We have to have something to make. God is the only one that says, I create stuff from nothing. I can say what I want and can pop up. If I say car, it'd be oh, car. Whatever I say. So God said there's gonna be a new heaven and new earth. Amen. So it's just interesting what they what they did, and they had this article, and I was just wow. But you know what they just did? And I'm just gonna say that they, they got a new hubble, they got a new space telescope they just put in space. Mm -hmm. To see a hundred miles. Wow. I'm, I think it's a hundred or a million miles. They, this thing is see the deep, deep, deep. 
But see, I wonder if God, I, I always wonder, did God, did you actually, when they preached that public school, did you actually just give them a glimpse of what they were? <laughs> you, know, like, <laughs> you know how, you know how uh, uh, Meshach and Billy Gopio were looking and a, and, a, and a king came and he looked in there and got a glimpse of He said, I thought I see, I see three men in the fire burning. Yeah. I see four. God gave him a chance. God opened his eyes. <laughs> he said, can we throw three in there? Well, I see four. Yeah. But God always gives a glimpse of yeah. what things are going to be like. Yeah. And he always gives us a glimpse. And I just want to encourage you guys to close out this message. I just want to encourage you guys um, uh, what, it, what it's going to be like in heaven with God. Now, one thing I want to let you know, if you miss this, I always say this, don't get caught dead without Christ. Don't get caught dead without Christ. Because, because, because the problem with that, once you die, your decision is sealed. I just had a pastor, my Ray, uh, Ray Bentley, my, my pastor that taught me died uh, two weeks ago. And when he died, his daughter told us at the hospital it got COVID and he had a little complication, but when he died, she grabbed his hand. And she said, Daddy, and he wasn't dead yet. She was talking. She said, Look, I want you to close your eyes and pay attention. Just close your eyes and go look for Jesus and grab him by the hand. So he closed his eyes and he said, She said, You see him? Yeah, I see him. She said, Grab him by the hand. And so he says, I got him by the hands, I got him by the hand. She said, Now, now, go with him. Mm. Okay, I got him by the hand. We're going. We're going. We're going. We're going. And he died. Mm -hmm. She was playing. She was like, just, just taking him to that, trying to get him better. Yeah. But she didn't know he really had him by hand. He was going. Yeah. So it just lets us know that you have to understand something. God has been trying to communicate with us for a long time. He's been trying to talk to us because the line has been disseverated because yes. of sin. Yes. But he uses Jesus and he uses the Holy Spirit to convict our lives. Yes. And if you hear a tugging on your life, you get right. You hear a tugging, that's God, the Holy Spirit tugging on you, that's God tugging on you because the communication sometimes is distorted. It ain't a clear line. Sometimes you ask Jesus for something you want it, and it the lines and you don't know, and you're still praying, but God will make a way. You just got to trust him. You got to wait. Sometimes you're rushing out, but you got to wait on him. But but the problem is, is the line sometimes is short. Did I hear you right, God? Did you say go this way? Did I, did it, which way do I go? It, but one day, the lines are going to be back on hook again. When you be walking God, so, man, Jesus, you know what? I was watching you. I was reading the Bible that day. And how did you do that thing? You, man, Jesus. And you're going to be talking and laughing with him. He's going to tell you stories. He said, he said, the Bible, the Bible can't even contain all the things that I've done. Right. So he's gonna tell you a whole thing. You got, you got eternity to listen to Jesus. You be walking like, damn. And watch this. And we think about this world right here. This ain't nothing. When he said, "My Father has that many mansions," mm -hmm. we're in the Milky Way galaxy, and we, it's millions of planets in the Milky Way galaxy. But there's 170 billion galaxies. He got enough galaxies to give us a whole galaxy, and we have a whole planet, a million planets in it. So guess what? This is what God has for you. So he wasn't talking about a hot mansion or on a hill of it. When God does, he does. When he throw a party, guess what? He throw a party. Okay, it ain't no party like the regular parties. He's gonna throw a big party. And we're gonna be with him. So with that said, I'm gonna close out. And I wanna thank you guys for this message. I have Pastor uh 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 who's great who the uh, Pastor Huda come up and, and, and but let me close out. I wanna thank you guys for we're gonna have a, uh, one song we're gonna play, one song we're gonna close out with. Um, uh, but I'll go ahead and uh, if you wanna get your uh, tithes and offerings. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah, okay. And we're gonna give tithes and offerings right now, but I uh, just wanna thank you guys, just remember that Jesus loves all. We're gonna start up the church, so we wanna get the truth out, because people don't really understand what's about to happen. But I want every eye closed, Dear Lord, thank you so much for your love, your grace, and mercy. Thank you for this time, Lord, as we collect the offerings, Lord. Let us be totally blessed and enriched and immersed in your love. Let us understand that this life is almost over. 
God gave us a timeline. And that we want to bless you. We want to uh, get this message out. We want to uh, see you, Lord. We, we miss you. We can't wait to get out of here because it's crazy. And Lord, we thank you so much for what you've done to us. We thank you today that we're here right now for this message, Lord. So we Lord, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.